salvation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the meeting of the Radnor Township Environmental Advisory Council. Today is March 4th, 2010. Um, we would like to get started with the review and approval of our minutes. The minutes of our previous meeting held on January 28th have been circulated for review. Um, thanks again to Ann Poulin for preparing them. And uh, thanks in advance to Josh Hilbert, who will be preparing our minutes for this meeting. Okay. Does anyone have any corrections or changes to the minutes? Motion. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thanks. Minutes are approved. Next up, we have a few announcements. The first one I wanted to mention is the Stream Bank Stabilization Program uh, that was going to be held in February, but due to snow got re rescheduled. It'll be held on March 10th at 7 p.m. This is the Homeowner Stream Bank Stabilization Program that we're co-sponsoring with the Radnor Conservancy. As I said, it'll be held Wednesday, March 10th at 7 p.m. in the Windsor Room at the, Ma the Radnor Memorial Library. And it is a free workshop addressing what landowners need to know if they have a stream on their property, give tips on what you can do to ensure that you have um, stable stream banks. They'll talk about how the stream works, what causes instability, and give uh, tips for steps that you can take to um, uh, avoid any problems associated with your stream banks. I believe they've said that the first 20 attendees are going to receive a free native seed mix for stream banks. So if you haven't uh, registered, you might want to think about doing that soon. You can register with an email to the Radnor Conservancy at radnor.conservancy at comcast.net. The next item on the agenda is we wanted to remind the folks here about the 2010 EAC conference that Josh Hilbert has been organizing, which is going to be held on Saturday, April 10th, and that will be at the Abington Friends School in Jenkintown. Now, Josh, are you going to be attending that? I will be attending, and the Radnor EAC uh, is allowed to bring, I believe, at least two if not more than two um, attendees for free since okay. I'm volunteering. And um, so I will be going, and I don't think I'll be speaking at it, but I'll be attending as an interested party. Okay, all right. And I've attended in the past. They're, they usually have a lot of interesting speakers talking about cutting-edge issues for municipalities. Is anybody else interested or available in attending? April 10th? It's usually a Saturday. Yeah, it's a Saturday. It starts or starts at around 9 a.m. and it goes. It runs till about two. If anybody's interested in going, they can um, contact me and I can give them more details. And uh, I have a draft uh, outline of the plan for the conference right now. It's not finalized, but it's getting close. Uh, there are four uh, four sessions. Um, Sorry, there's eight sessions divided into, into two time groups, and you can so that means you can attend two different sessions. There's energy sessions, water related, land use related, and then there's another session that has to do with how EACs and board of commissioners can relate better, or you know, it t talks about how to um, have have a synergy between BOCs and and EACs. And uh, so I think there's going to be some interesting topics that, um, that anybody might be able to find a topic that they're interested in. I understood that DVRPC was working on some kind of toolkit for community sustainability toolkit. Do you have DVRPC on the agenda as a speaker? DVRPC is on the agenda, and they will be speaking of a tool, of a tool that they have de uh, recently developed. I'm not sure if it's what exactly it's for, but it might have something to do with estimating greenhouse gas emissions. Okay. Um, but I'll have to get back to you on that okay. for sure. All right. Good. <clears throat> I also wanted to announce that uh, the Rat Radnor Township has released the 
2010 environmental and nature recreation schedule that comes out every year with a whole list of activities for park cleanups and um, educational activities that are sponsored by the township and uh, organizations in the township like Darby Creek Valley Association. The first item on the agenda is the park cleanup at uh, Clem McCrone Park Saturday, March 27th from 9 to 1. Uh, and then if, if you want to go to the website, you can see the whole list of activities that run through the rest of the year. We'll make sure that we announce these activities as they're coming up. But you might want to mark that on your calendar. And they can find that on, online on the online, website? Online, right, yep. At the, uh, you can go right to either click on the, um, the Radnor Green button or you can go through Parks and Recreation and we'll have it listed there. Does anyone else have announcements? Um, just as, as far as the cleanup for the Darby Creek, uh, uh, the watershed wide cleanup that mm -hmm. um, is listed there, I was just going to mention that the Darby Creek April Valley 24th. Association, right, okay. April 24th. Um, uh, folks are encouraged to identify a spot that's uh, been overlooked, needs some attention, and they can actually sign up with the Darby Creek Valley Association to be a stream captain and recruit through the website to get some folks together to do a cleanup. It's, it's uh, great to try and do as much as we can on that day because um, the, the materials are available and it's sort of a collective effort to spruce up the watershed. So um, uh, www.dcva.org is the location. And, and Robin, what's involved in being a uh, stream captain? Stream captain. Um, it just involves recruiting uh, people to come to a particular location on um, the creek or one of its tributaries and um, arranging to have people meet at a location that's accessible and um, you know in some instances it involves, it involves uh, getting permission um, if it's on you know a, a commercial property site or something like that. We don't tend to have that so much um, in Radnor. And um, then uh, just making sure that everyone signs a, a waiver. And um, if there are kids involved, um, we tend to encourage them to have um, uh, their parent come along or, um, you know, their parent's friend, whoever's <laughs> assigned to be bringing folks to, together. But it's a, it's a great day. Very good. I had an announcement uh, with, uh, in, in connection with the WaterSense pro program that we joined as a township. Uh, it's the EPA program that uh, encourages people to uh, use water uh, conserving uh, appliances. Um, the WaterSense program is doing their first fix a leak week. Uh, coming up in mid-March, March 15th through the 21st. Um, so I spoke with an EPA person who encouraged us to get the word out uh, about this, uh, this effort. And it's an educational effort. They're highlighting uh, uh, the fact that leaks can uh, account for, uh, they say, on average 10,000 gallons of water wasted in a single home in a single year. Uh, and they've got estimates for how much uh, wasted water uh, nationally uh, is involved, and so it's a pretty big, uh, pretty big issue for water conservation. Um, there's quite a bit of information about this on the EPA site, the WaterSense site, and uh, we're going to try to build a link to that uh, on the Radnor EAC site. So look for that and. Uh, uh, there's some educational material uh, to focus on in that week, the week of March 15th. Um, Sloan, if you got that link to me, I could get that on this on the school's website. Oh, wow. And okay. even I know, at least at our school, like the fifth grade will take on certain projects for over the PA system and emailing. Great. Um, just if, if you let teachers know. Um, if you get me that, I can get it and proliferate okay. to the elementary I can, schools. I can send that to you. Great. Any other announcements? I think this uh, is appropriate to mention this from the other watershed, the, uh, the Roaring Creek watershed, and it's in Columbia County. And they have their annual uh, native plant sales. And I went on the uh, website 
and they have wonderful descriptions of native plants, uh, what they do, what their strengths are, um, and they even have a, a, an order list that you can buy these for relatively little money. Uh, deciduous native seedlings, native bulbs, uh, shrubs, sorry, evergreen tree seedlings, native ground covers, uh, native perennials, native grasses, uh, bluebird boxes for $10 a piece. Uh, just, it, it's a wonderful idea to offer these perennials for sale to the residents of, of Columbia County. And you can order them and then pick them up at uh, two or three sites throughout Columbia County. It, I wonder if any other counties are doing this. I haven't found out whether Delaware County has this yet. And the county is sponsoring it? Yes, it's a Columbia yeah. County Conservation District. Okay. Columbia CCD. Dot org. I haven't heard of that, Robin. Have you heard of other counties doing that? Um, not of counties doing mm -hmm. it. I've, I mean, there are a lot, there are a number of uh, native plant sales in this area, but not county sponsored. It's a good right. idea. Right. I think Bartram Gardens has a uh, annual plant sale. I'm assuming it's a native plant sale. Well, and uh, Lower Marion um, Conservancy does one, yeah. which okay. is probably the closest. Yes. Um, and Jenkin Arboretum does. Yeah, that that's well. right. <laughs> and so does Swarthmore. Um, yeah. There's, in fact, there's somewhere there's a, there is a native plant sale link, and that might be through either Swarthmore or the Radnor Conservancy, even where. Give you know, it, we should probably, um, you know, find out when those are and make sure that we include okay, those I'll, with I'll our announcements. That. Okay, great. <laughs> great, thanks. Any other announcements before we move into the next items on the agenda? Okay. The next item is our work group reports and discussion, and our first work group is the climate change work group. Robin or Josh, you want to give an update on where we are? You know, we held a work group meeting and taking the next steps. Do you want to just report out on that? Um, so we had a meeting with Matt Bauman um, just about taking the next step, and um, the uh, general thinking was that we need to do needed to drill down a little bit more into what the departments of the township are doing. So um, we figured the best way to uh, take a closer look at um, what the programs are doing is to bring the various departments together and have a meeting. So that's what I guess is in the process of being scheduled with. Um, right, uh, we're going to reach out to right, the public works, party, right. planning, police department the rest. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll uh, hold a meeting with them and this will give us an opportunity to talk uh, about uh, where the opportunities are for um, efficiencies that will enhance the, the work of the department and make things easier on them and at the same time um, have a, a make a dent in, in our greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and then we're also going to meet with the school district and um, talk a little bit about what uh, joint opportunities might be possible uh, there, and right, so we'll gather uh, a bunch of feedback right. before we start, you know, Please. working on an action plan. So, and then the thinking is that that will give us a better idea. One of the first things that we need to do is to establish uh, a recommended um, target uh, reduction amount, uh, just a benchmark to shoot for for the township that we would recommend to the commissioners for adoption. So that has to be part of the climate action plan. But um, better to start with what. Uh, we learn from the departments and then try and come up with that number. Right. And I actually, I was, add. I, I was talking to Andrew Kreider at EPA, who's going to be one of our speakers at the upcoming sustainability series. And he was, um, he was talking about Energy Star and noting that there's these Energy Star partners. And he noted that we are not an Energy Star partner and encouraged us to maybe evaluate that. So perhaps as we go forward in our action plan, um, we might want to think about that. But I do believe, from what he told me, that when you become a partner, you set a goal for reductions. And so I had said to him, we want to sort of figure out where we're at and what we can achieve before we set a goal. But that may be something that we should just kind of keep in the back of our mind. Um, it, I think the benefits of that are that if you're setting a goal and you're meeting goals, that you get some recognition for it. So. Yeah. 
Um, and I don't know whether you had anything more to add to that, Josh. If so, go ahead. And if not, um, do you want to just uh, tell a little bit about the, the rating tool, the yardstick? Sure. Yeah, I don't have anything to add as far as our uh, uh, energy plan or um, action planning uh, goes. But the, on the Radnor Green webs, uh, web page on Radnor's website, we have added a link to an uh, EPA's Energy Star tool called their Home Energy Yardstick. And this is a tool that enables homeowners to determine what their carbon footprint as, uh, of their house is. Uh, the tool takes some data that you should have, you might have handy around the house. If not, it's fairly easily attainable. It allows you to enter it into the, into the uh, the, the tool, the website, and then uh, out it um, it uh, gives out your uh, greenhouse gas emissions in pounds per uh, pounds per year, and it also gives your total amount of BTUs, which are um, the, the total amount of energy that you you can, your house consumed, and it then rates attempts to rate you on a um, uh, against your peers. And your peers being homes that are in your in the region, homes of re of the same size, and uh, in the same zip code uh, at, during the same period. So this this tool is smart enough to understand about what the weather was like during the period that you entered the data. It's also smart enough to understand that um, the Radnor zip code is colder than say the a South Carolina zip code might be. So I've passed out to the, to the members here a, uh, um, a, a sample. We won't say whose terrible house this was, <laughs> but uh, no, truthfully, I, I took my, two, my 2008 data from Pico and from the company that delivered my oil to my house for heating. And I entered that data in as, as well as the, my square footage of my home, my address, and how many people are living in my home. And it tells me that I ranked on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being the best, zero being the worst, I ranked a 3.4 on the yardstick. So that means that 66% of homes similar are, are better than I am. So that is a less than desirable score, I would say. But the good news is there's room for improvement. Absolutely. And it, it also probably says you have an old home. It does, I'm yeah. Well, has, I have an old home that has yet to um, go through a, a, a um, an upgrade, uh, an energy upgrade, um, uh, you know, uh, implementation of, of various projects that could help this. And, and this this website is is um, kind of handy, and in that, uh, with a little bit more information that uh, that you enter after you're finished this initial phase, it will direct you on how to improve your score. So. Um, for instance, it, it might uh, it might f tell you how to go ahead and seal and uh, insulate your home, and it, it'll help you dive into uh, maybe what are the best materials to seal your home, what are the best methods to do that, and uh, I'm not sure if it d directs you to um, partners that might be that might provide those services or not. I don't I don't think it does do that, but it certainly tells you how to go about and, and start the process. Right, so it gives you a little handy guide of yeah. some suggestions. So it doesn't know exactly what your house is like, but it gives you perhaps the you know the top ten or, mm -hmm. or certain number of items uh, to take a look at. You know, sure. fixing leaks around uh, windows or something. It'll like ask that. you, for for instance, how old is your your heater and your mm -hmm. air conditioner, and if uh, you know if it's over a certain number of years and your yardstick score is a, is low, it might recommend that you consider budgeting for that in the next couple of years or whatever. So, also, it does recommend um, seeing about maybe having a, a home efficiency consultant. And I would think that through some of the sustainability series, there may be some information. There were a couple of, um, of home, energy, home energy auditors that spoke at one of the prior series. So right. those folks you can find through the website because we have all the sustainability series um, material up there. And then in addition, um, I'm guessing that on the PICO 
website, you can probably find your way to that because they're starting all of their promotional activities under Act 129, and I know they're encouraging people to do energy audits. So there may also be information there in addition to our, our website. I think they also offer it directly. I think PICO does. Um, that you know. they're doing the audits themselves yeah, as opposed to using contractors? I'm not mistaken. There was something that came through uh, PICO about their 129 work. I'm not. They have approved contractors. Oh, okay. Is yep. that what it is? All right. Mm -hmm. And is there, do they give any data about what the average for the area is? Or do you kind of have to. Well, the average would be average would probably be a f yardstick score of five. Of five, but um, I, I suppose you could find that out by putting in some different right po data points and seeing where where the score is. Um, it'd be sort of interesting to know. Yeah, I think this is very interesting, very helpful, and kind of encourages people to think in terms of positive incremental steps. Mm -hmm. And it's also interesting to see: did they give you this this out? Put in 12 tons, or did they you do? They, they do give you the, the greenhouse gas emissions in pounds, and they also give you your uh, your BTUs. It just doesn't show on this on wow. this printout. That's great. So it literally shows what your carbon footprint carbon is. footprint yes. is the actual impact on an annual basis, yeah. at least for the home. for the home. And then also on the on our Radnor Green website, if I'm not mistaken, we still have another tool that was put out by the Energy Star program that allows you to. To develop a more comprehensive carbon footprint, that would include your your vehicles, oh, good, and your uh, the other activities that you might do outside your home. Wow, that's right. Great. So this is a very simplified tool that is designed for anybody to use. So if somebody's interested in, hey, I just want a real quick snapshot yeah. of my home and you know what the greenhouse gas emissions right, are, right. the energy, you can go ahead and use this. And if this you want to have a more sophisticated understanding of it, though then you should definitely attend the Sustainability Series <laughs> program coming up next Tuesday yeah. night, where Josh will be one of the speakers, and we will right. have Andrew Kreider from EPA, who will talk all about how you can determine your own carbon footprint. And he, what he's planning to do is bring a worksheet and then some sample data and walk people through like how you can do these calculations yeah. so that instead of just inserting it into a computer and having something come back at you, for those that are really interested in how to do it, there will be more explanation there. And then we'll also hear from Haverford Township, who has already done their emissions inventory and their greenhouse gas um, action plan, which covers both the municipal operations and the township, and we'll hear how they're coming along. So that's great. If this you're interested in this, there's certainly yeah, more information a, to be had shortly. A great plug. But I, I also think this could be very handy if we do the, um, the community challenge. This might be a good tool for that. <laughs> yeah. you, could have, you could have a who, who's See, got the who's highest got score, the right. or the, who's right. got the best improvement, it, or the best improvement, most improved. Right. Most yep. improved. Um, Josh, I'm just wondering. Did you say this is going to be on the? It the is green already. Runner? It is already on the record. And so, where is it under? Like what? Under what's energy. The trail? There's a energy and a climate change section. I think is where we put it. Okay, because at some right. If so at click, some point, we might want to make a category that's almost kind of tools that tools and resources people can use. Like if we get these and we'll have the minutes from the sustainability series, right? Right, and we can link it through there. We'll so the way it's there. set up now is through various topics and because this relates both to energy and to climate change, there's a link from both of those places. Right, but I was just, yeah. and Josh was saying there are also a lot of other tools about your car. Like, I'm I sure think there I is one other tool on our website. I'm not positive about that, but. I, I think that right? you're right, it is there. Yeah, but maybe if we yeah. had a tools for people who are just want to tinker around. But I just want to make one point. Mm -hmm. and that is that um, um, I think as we, we were speaking the other day a little bit about energy, the electricity consumption, and um, the fact that there are a lot of things that people can do that aren't all that expensive, that don't necessarily involve a remodeling project, but that give them an opportunity to really cut down on their electricity use. Yes. And there's some pretty simple tools. One that I just saw after we met was there is now um, a uh, power strip that you can plug your computer into that turns off uh, all of the uh, equipment plugged into it when you turn the computer off. So um, it, that's a pretty simple, inexpensive tool um, that, you know, because cause all that vampire um, energy consumption, it, you know, adds up. So. Um, 
And, and, and that would be that. It'd be nice if there was a tool like that for televisions. Well, One thing I will say is if you have Verizon, if you turn off your television, you lose and you have to call them and completely get it reconnected every time, whereas Comcast, you can power down and then power up. Because that is that's supposedly right. one of the, like a computer, like a really large yeah. uh, vampire consumer. But it, can you email me that link? And sure, sure. Do you remember green, the name of it? It's called Green, well, Green Home has a special on them this week. That's a, that's a, I think it was Co-op America, but it's now greenhome.org, I believe. And um, it's on sale this, um, this week. I will email it to you. I think that's right, greenhome.org. Uh, but also, I, and I didn't know about the Verizon, but I mean, I have, I have cable from Comcast, and I mean, I just turn off the power strip, you know, when I'm not using the TV, and it works fine. So um, it can be done. It just involves that extra step that... And kids can do it. Yes. They, they learn yeah. quick how to turn that power strip right. back on. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Better at turning it on than turning it off. <laughs> yeah. well, no, another interesting use is I know that some people are interested in... Uh, purchasing carbon offsets for their cars and, and other uh, travel travel exactly so this would be an interesting tool for them to calculate what their offset should be um, and so I think this is great to get the kind of a, a concrete number <laughs> I, I did quick research trying to f figure out how I could explain what 24,000 pounds of greenhouse gas emissions from my home in a year would equate to in terms of planting X number mm -hmm. of trees. Right. Or, there's, uh, I, I found such, such a wide uh, <coughs> variation in um, number of trees <laughs> that I can't even, I can't even, uh, right. I couldn't find it. There was no easy tool that would yeah. help me estimate that, but that would be. But there uh, are groups that, that will help calculate that. I think there's sure. what the Carbon, carbon Fund, fund mm -hmm. does this. this. And so, okay. you know, I think it's an interesting. Maybe that'd be a nice, ha nice little link right yeah. next to our tool. Right. <laughs> I think it would be nice to know, like, since, right, two tons means nothing to me. Like, what is that compared? Like, if someone's going to say, okay, if, if I switch to a hybrid car or if <coughs> I, you know, get a car with this, mm -hmm. You know, what does that, how does this, that compare it? Or this if I tool, stop commuting, if I take the train in, like. This tool will also tells you, uh, it, when, when it tells you how, many, how much greenhouse gas emissions your house has, it also tells you how many miles driven on a typical car that equates to. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so I think it, um, you know, it was like around the earth twice or something like that. You know, it was, <laughs> it, it was, it was a lot of greenhouse gas. <laughs> you know, one, one thing I'd like to add about this real quick is that if you happen to throw out your PICO bills every month, and you don't keep a 12-month rolling record, it's very easy to call up PICO and request a, um, a report, and they'll send you okay. the past 12 months or the past tw uh, 24 months both how much electricity, how much natural gas, and how much dollars that you spent on those. Um, so make, making this data entry very easy. Oh, great. Thank you. We bought a, uh, a meter which allows you to uh, calculate and, ob and observe the power consumption for any appliance that you wish to put plug into it. And uh, first thing we did was check our refrigerator. And we, we were pleased to see that our Amana uh, will uh, operate at a cost of about $97 a year uh, when you program the, uh, the electricity consumption meter into it for 16 cents a kilowatt hour. That's a sort of an an average ballpark figure that includes all the distribution costs and the, uh, everything else that goes into an electric bill. Uh, our 42-inch flat-screen TV costs about $80 a year, the way we operate it. And that's the useful thing. It, 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 it's for the individual appliance and the way you use it. And they're about $40. What's the name of the device that you have? It, one of them is called the kilowatt. Okay. <laughs> uh, K-I-L-L. -L. Yes. Oh. And it's a, it, it, we purchased it from a mail order source, and I, I, I can get all that information and bring it to the next meeting. Okay. It, it, we it found may be it worthwhile because people may be interested in that. Yes. Mm -hmm. so is, is it called like an energy meter? I mean, kind of like yes, it, it really is. You, you can program it for... Uh, 
the number of hours that it, it is calculating everything for you, and the longer you run the, the, the appliance through this meter, the more accurate the projections are. It'll, it, 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 it's a, like a, a summary of the use of the uh, appliance as, as it is operating, and it gets more and more accurate the longer you run. Have you run. ever tested it on something that's off? Pardon? On the, uh, Have you ever tested it? Can you test something that's off, like your television when it's turned off? Yes, it, it, this is this is plugs into it constantly, so it, you can turn your TV off and you turn it on, and it knows it knows that it, there's much more power consumed when you turn it on, but it's a it's a constantly running uh, summary of the power consumption for that particular appliance, whether it's on or off, and of course when our TV is off, it uses a lot more a lot less electricity about one one hundredth of what it uses when it's on so with this new knowledge that you have did that cause you to either change appliances that you have or change habits that you have with regard to how you use them it would have if we found out that the refrigerator was consuming a lot more than we thought was appropriate it it falls under the energy star category it's a very economical, and, and they they revolutionized refrigeration about 15 years ago when they redesigned the compressors and the insulation. They became o overnight much more efficient, and uh, we st we happen to have one, even though it's about nine years old. So we're pleased. That would have made us change. <laughs> okay, and great. when we found that uh, some of our uh, business tenants that we using old refrigerators we we plugged it in and we showed them how much power that that old refrigerator refrigerator is consuming that it wasn't worth even giving it to someone it's it's it consumes too much energy mm -hmm. and we got we got a new new uh, refrigerator for our eastern star tenants because theirs was 30 years old and costing a whole lot of money to run mm -hmm. great same with hvac So I would encourage anybody that might be interested in trying out the yardstick that uh, Josh has um, gotten on the website. And if you're interested in trying it out, it might be great to try it out before the sustainability series so that if you have problems, questions, issues, you can bring them to the program and we'll have a representative from EPA here and you can ask your questions and uh, you know address any concerns that you may have with either how it works or with the type of information that it's providing to you. So again, I'll just plug it one more time because I really think it's going to be a fabulous program and very informative. The sustainability series, it's called Discovering Your Carbon Footprint how to tread more lightly and it'll be held on Tuesday March 9th here at the Township Building from 7 to 9 p.m. That'll be my last Nobody plot. has to say how, what their carbon footprint yeah. is when they come. That's right. right. <laughs> Brenda's going to give a prize to the person who comes in with the highest yardstick score. Thank right. you, Brenda. Okay. <laughs> the, it, what would be great is the person who has moved the farthest on the yardstick. You know. That's right. Yeah. Progress. <laughs> okay. Okay, so moving into the next work group is the sustainability group. And the first item there was the sustainability series that we've covered. The second item is the WaterSense program, and we have some good news to report yes, on that, we right, Sloan? do. We were accepted by the EPA as promotional partners, which is very good news. Um, and I talked to one of their representatives uh, about what this means and what kind of materials we can get. They're on the website. Uh, there's quite a bit of uh, uh, brochures and, and facts uh, 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 available. Um, we are free to send that material out to township residents. Um, Can I ask uh, you just to maybe back up, yeah. you know, for anybody that may be listening on TV and isn't familiar what WaterSense Absolutely. is? You want to just back up and give a yep. little overview of that? Yep. It is a, a program that the EPA has started which is intended to provide consumers with information about uh, water efficient products and services. That's the primary focus. Um, it's developed a, a water sense label, somewhat like the Energy Star label, 
uh, to be used on faucets and toilets and gardening equipment and other water intensive uh, appliances to differentiate those that are very efficient uh, in terms of using water. Um, and uh, the, the EPA has uh, uh, developed standards for these types of appliances um, and uh, has posted those, uh, the various appliances that meet these standards on its website. So there's a very good resource for homeowners and, and contractors who are trying to be more water efficient on the EPA uh, website. Um, and more generally, they're also trying to uh, educate folks about uh, being efficient uh, in, in water use. And so as a partner, we're helping to get the exactly. word out. So we're trying to get the word out. We're a promotional <laughs> partner, uh, which means we, we try to uh, uh, help the EPA get its educational materials out. Um, uh, I talked to uh, the rep about whether we can link, and as we talked about, we can link. There's a widget we can put on a special page uh, on our website that will uh, be a link right through to the WaterSense uh, page, home page. So I'll work uh, uh, on, on, on getting that information around. Great, very good. So one question I have, you're saying, so since our, our job is to promote and get this information out, so does that mean, so it'll be on our website, does that mean we can link to that from other, like I'm thinking of the school web pages, mm. whether? Uh, I didn't ask about the school specifically, so I can double check on that. We can certainly, I, I asked about the EAC, and it, I don't think they're, uh, we'll have to double check, but. I mean, are um, they looking to actually physic have physical materials about the water sense disseminated? Like, I, I remember there was a component about community education. Well, they, they certainly, you certainly could, and they would provide that, um, but I think we were talking after the meeting about whether it's more environmentally friendly to, you know, do it online. Um, instead of, you know, doing paper versions, so. That's right, but um, I know Heather has mentioned about, uh, you know, the network they have at the schools, and the schools send out e-newsletters now, mm -hmm. so e it may it may right. be worthwhile connecting with Heather to see, you know, and if you it can be part alert, of. Like, just yeah. individually, just here's this program, and maybe right. even link it with this campaign thing yeah. they have in I March. I think it's a good idea. It seems very much in line with what the EPA's trying to do. Mm -hmm. So um, perhaps, so. Um, Sloan, when we, um, I guess we were talking about, you know, developing a, a page dedicated right. to this on the Radnor website, and once right. we get that set up, to then send out a press release announcing that we're a promotional yeah. partner, linking through to the website, and perhaps at that point, too, we should work with Heather and the schools to make sure that the word is going out through the schools at the same time that we're ready to send the word out generally, so that when we send the word out, people can link to something that does exist that's got all the information on it. Right, and in places where you might want something physical, like a brochure or whatever would be, the library where they have, you know, right as you walk in and out of the library, they have a stand with brochures on a variety of things. And, you know, to get, I mean, people like my mother who go to the library all the time and don't have a computer, um, there are, <laughs> yeah, they're still out there. But those, there might be a few places where it's worth having it written, even if it's just in the lobbies oh, yeah. of the schools, just a, a, a right. small amount of them. Right, and if it's a small them. number, I mean, they're readily printable, so we could print those for the school um, if it's, you know, if they want right. 20 or 30 or something like that just to have around. That would be no That's problem. Good idea. Or to let the commissioners know, you know, to yeah. give mm -hmm. them copies Yeah, of there's them. some brochures out here. Okay. So I think that's a that's, good idea. That's actually a very good point. So at that point in time when we're kind of ready to right. make a big announcement to make sure that we have materials, Heather, as you suggest, at maybe the Board of Commissioners meeting because right. there's a lot of people that attend that. That's a very good idea. That's a good idea. Okay. So I think that's the great overview. That's great. All right. Very good. The next item on the agenda under sustainability is open space. <clears throat> Ann Poulin and Julia Hurley are both on the, op the Township Open Space Committee, but neither one of them was able to make it here tonight. So we'll defer a report on that until they get back. I'm not sure that they've had a meeting yet, um, but we'll get an update next time around. 
Okay, and then Heather, we're on to community environmental education awareness. I wasn't sure if you had anything new to report on that. Um, I don't have much new. One question: okay. Do we have a contact with the with the Shade Tree Commission on this panel? I, I did go the conser the Radnor Conservancy. Um, did have a presentation on trees. They had someone from Penn State and also from the Morse Arboretum at the library last night. And there was someone I was, uh, the library was closing so I didn't get my kids, but there was someone, that the, the issue was, um, basically they presented on the value of trees in the community. The number of waters for stormwater management, how much water a tree absorbs in its lifetime. And they did a cost analysis even showing that you know, each tree planted, like, say, brings back $296,000 over a 40-year lifespan of that tree for a community. Um, so in other words, it can't cost $1,000 to plant a tree if you really look at planting it, caring for it, pruning it, all of that. Um, but the issue came about shopping and that there are not many shade trees or trees. Shopping. shopping. Sorry, so it's what I, it's more like what I do, not you. <laughs> shopping, oh. but I think in shopping in shopping districts, in commercial districts where you have stores and people wander in and buy things they don't need. So they're saying that people are more likely to stay. It's good for commerce, and they were and the person noted from Penn State that we don't have a lot of trees in town, and a man in the audience who seemed like maybe he was on shade tree or something planning, said that that's going to change. Is there does anyone know of a plan to? plant trees in the downtown area? Well, I saw something in the um, Radnor Conservancy um, newsletter that just came into the mail this past week that showed a uh, there was some, pl some plan to put in, um, I think, uh, I'm not sure if they were native shade trees, but they were shade trees. And they, I, I think they, they had a, uh, a certain amount of plantings in the fall and then they were going to do a spring planting that involved the trees that were best planted in the spring, like, which I think were the oaks. And so I'm not sure if that was um, who was sponsoring that, but it was in the oh. Conservancy newsletter, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. No? Yeah. I don't know. And, it was, and, but, and we and don't have a, a liaison designated from Shade Tree. So to I'll follow up from that meeting. As I said, I didn't say for the end. Um, but they, it, she was also just uh, outlined... And I'll even see if I could get the minutes to put on to um, our website. From, and she, again, is from Penn State, but outlined kind of the steps to take as far as ordinances. Um, and, and she talked about the value of getting a certified arborist. Actually, it was the person from the Morris Arboretum kind of giving the whole, kind of how they're doctors. And, you know, you've got your specialist at the top and your candy striper at the bottom and saying it's kind of the same thing for arborists and encouraging people to use one that is a certified or accredited because I do think that's where people end up chopping down large trees that they shouldn't be because they just use, you know, someone with a chainsaw and a truck who's the cheapest guy around um, and just encouraging people to, to use. So I do think if we had a stronger tie with Shade Tree Commission, I mean, I know all these years I, I should have found out more but not really sure what what they do or what, how we could help support them in their, in their mission to have people not just cutting down trees or even our ordinances require replacing trees. But that really, as I, as I understand it, just means you replace the tree, like you plant it, and then when it dies three months later, you still did your bit, I think. Like I don't, is that how you understand it, Robin? I don't know I that much about it. My understanding was that you actually had to replace the trees that died, with, you know, in, within a certain period within of time of the period. planning. But I, I you know, right. because a, a developer has a commitment to, you know. Right. I just I know someone had come in and told stories about them kind of getting planted, and then they're in a parking lot or in some place where it's unlikely for it to survive. Uh -huh. I, I know that's an issue uh -huh. that's been brought. So. You could so maybe you could reach out to someone yeah. on Shade Tree uh -huh. and okay. Right, very good. Um, but nothing else, community average, other than the Radnor Conservancy is doing a lot of okay. great stuff. All right, good. Now we'll move on to liaison reports. Herb, do you have anything from the Board of Health? Sure do. Um, the Board of Health uh, is following up on something that was presented before this body. Um, the Board of Health will be revisiting the issue of the, um, the cat leash ordinance um, and uh, <clears throat> basically that's something we looked at several years ago and 
Dr. Prescott probably remembers that as well. And our conclusion at that point was that um, one of the difficulties in going forward with any addition to the uh, pet leash ordinances that we already have, uh, which primarily affect dogs, is uh, the enforcement issue. I mean, who is going to enforce the leash law? Um, we have a police department that has, you know, other burdens that they have uh, and other priorities, and uh, certainly um, attending to uh, enforcing that ordinance would add an additional burden. That said, uh, we are going to revisit it at our next meeting, uh, the third Monday in, in March, um, and we will have a presentation by the township's animal control officer on what is being done right now. Um, and that um, raises the fact that there are really, with regard to cats running loose in Radnor, there are two populations. One are those cats that are actually owned by people. Um, they are pets, and but they are roaming uh, un, uncontrolled. And then there are the feral cats, which uh, in my mind at least are a, a much more serious issue. Um, cats that are pets are, are fed at home, but feral cats are not fed. And uh, there is some evidence that uh, they are making depredations in the populations of migratory birds and small mammals. And of course, rabies becomes an issue um, down the road, uh, a possibility. So uh, I think the Board of Health will be looking at those two f facets of the, the cat problem in Radnor Township. Um, Dr. Prescott, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as I've reported in the past, um, I do an occasional series over the township's cable channel, channel 30 if you have Verizon, channel 10 if you have Comcast. On uh, It's called Radnor Health Matters. We just did the uh, second in this year's series, and it's on human papillomavirus, or HPV, and cervical cancer, um, which is caused by two of the uh, varieties of uh, HPV, human papillomavirus. Uh, Jim Doling informs me that tomorrow it, you can see it at 12 noon and 3 p.m. And for additional air times, um, you can at, look at the township's uh, web page and find the additional information as to when it's going to be aired. The Board of Health has um, agreed to be one of the co-sponsors of a um, mini conference that will take place after our next board meeting, um, the third Monday, I guess that's March 15th, if I'm not mistaken, but third Monday of the month. Um, we will be co-sponsoring a uh, mini conference which is being conducted by the uh, Community Coalition for Youth in Radnor. And that uh, body, um, one of the organizers of that is uh, Elaine Paul Schaefer, who is one of our township commissioners. And the purpose of that is to begin to deal with issues related to um, drug and alcohol abuse on the part of uh, our Radnor youth as it affects the larger community. Bear in mind that the school district already has a drug and alcohol task force, but their focus is primarily within the school. And, um, but as we are probably all, can all appreciate, um, this often spills out into the broader community as an issue and so they will that's the kickoff conference in, in their activities. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that the EAC may be interested in, in doing, um, the Board of Health has been uh, begun working with the uh, Radnor High School. Uh, there is a uh, encouragement, if not a requirement, that uh, high school students provide uh, some amount of community service and one of the ways they do that is through um, internships. And we've approached the high school, uh, her name is uh, Susan Henderson, 
uh, who um, is the faculty representative for that. Um, and we're in the process of, of um, recruiting a student intern to work with the Board of Health. And I can't help but think that there would be many uh, students at the high school who would be very interested in an opportunity to work with the EAC as well. Um, Actually, on that point, I hadn't had a chance to catch up with you, Robin, or you, Josh, but um, I, did have, uh, I, I did have someone contact me about a high school student who is interested in helping us with the Climate Action Plan. Oh, great. Yeah. So, but that's yeah, a, a one of the things point. they want you to do is to prepare a brief job description uh, for what the student intern would do. And that could be during the school year as well as the summer or in addition to the summer. Uh, it could be a different intern for the summer than during the school year. And last but certainly not least from my point of view is we have two vacancies on the Board of Health. And if anyone knows, um, anyone here and anyone out there listening knows of anyone who is, uh, might be interested in uh, joining the Board of Health, um, they would need to write a letter of interest addressed to the township manager. We don't have a name for that person as of this moment. Hopefully that will be soon. But if you just address it to the township manager indicating your interest and accompanying that with a uh, a resume or a curriculum vitae, um, uh, it will be followed up on. Should those folks have any type of professional health background, or is it open to anybody that just is interested in health matters? Um, it, at, I, I think most of the members of the Board of Health are people with uh, some background in public health or uh, some field related to health. Uh, we have a veterinarian on the board, we have a dentist on the board, we have uh, a couple of physicians but and nurses as well. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Right, the next topic on the agenda is old business. Is there any old business that uh, we have any follow-up on that hasn't already been addressed? That's just kind of our category. If I think of something in advance, I do try to get it on the agenda, and that's just a catch-all. <laughs> I don't know if there's any information we could gather about how the single stream recycling is going and whether there's any, any issues related to that. Um, uh, I, I don't know whether the township is collecting the same data. Um, I had to tell you, I have very little trash nowadays. <laughs> very little trash. Yeah, I, I will say anecdotally, um, someone who had all the systems in, it does seem amazing. Like, and I have heard from people who are very green or community-minded who have confessed that they are recycling a lot more. more. Um, and I will, I will follow up with Peggy Hagan. I, I've been looking into the Recycle Bank and a, a little communication with her. So, I, you know, it's still kind of... Yeah back and forth, but I will definitely get some from her. I do know, um, I do know I see them going to pick up the sticks. I do want to repeat for, you know, everyone understands with the single stream that you can now put it together in the same bins. It's now through. Certainly worth reiterating that, Heather, yes, if you want to go ahead that and do that. Now you're recycling, you can put your cardboard, all of your paper, your cereal boxes in with your bottles, um, your plastics, one through seven. And it can go in the same container. It's collected probably on the same day. A big change is that on Wednesdays, except during holiday weeks, they collect yard waste, and that gets composted. I, I all, am under the understanding that the garbage will still collect. Like, I missed my Wednesday stick pickup, and I'm sure everyone's got a lot of sticks. <laughs> um, and they do need to be inside the container. They're not going to just get the big 20-foot limb that happens to be sitting at your driveway for the last four weeks, which I know from my neighbor. They're like, they wouldn't take it. <laughs> so, but they said, oh, we'll pick it up on Monday. And my concern is, you know, try and get that yard waste out on Wednesday. If you miss the pickup, like they came at 8.30 and I missed it, don't just leave it out on Monday. It's not going to magically get sorted out into the compost truck. Like, it is Wednesdays. It will get composted. You can put it in your garbage um, and they will pick it up on Monday, but Wednesdays is for yard waste, and especially when people start doing spring cleanup, if you're not putting it in your compost pile, or if, as I said, it's, if it's big sticks. 
Um, so you still have your regular trash day. You have your your recycle day. It is nice just to have one or two cans, being able to put it all together, um, and that on Wednesdays the items will get composted, which does save a lot of landfill. Um, but I, I will follow up, and I am doing some, in communication with Peggy Hagen. And they really are recycling. And uh, we will be fine. Supposedly, you know, TE preceded us. They are. I know Peggy Hagen at one point in time had really questioned whether these things are getting recycled, but the word is that they are actually getting recycled. Uh, bottle caps. You know, yeah. I, I will follow up. And, I, and another issue that has been brought to my attention is that supermarkets are required to collect plastic bags for recycling, but I have heard that there is question on whether those are actually getting recycled. Um, and one of the issues with Recycle Bank that I'm struggling with is, you know, there's the cost for the program, but also if you're encouraging people to recycle, does that discourage them from not getting those little mini water bottles or do you know what I mean? Like. Right, exactly. So, um, so I'll follow up, and next month I will have a report on that. And if appropriate, someone will, from Recycle Bank will come. Brenda, can I just ask one question? Um, the uh, bottles that have a plastic, a plastic bottle that has a plastic lid, it used to be that the township wouldn't take the bottle if the lid was on it because it's two different kinds of plastic. They have what a machine now? that sucks off the top of a. If you have like a Coke bottle. So you don't have to remove those caps, and they can still go in the... They can okay. still go in there. Supposedly they have... It extrudes the caps. I don't know. It, it does uh, take the caps off. Okay, thanks. Just Whether those get recycled, I don't know. Just to quickly re revisit um, what Sloan was saying, and to reiterate what you're probably saying, we have pretty good data up through the end of 2009. And by the way, I, I did get the 2009 figures for, for waste and for recycling oh, for, for, for the township um, in terms of tons. Um, you're going to d double check that with the new system that's in place, we're still going to, we're going to be able to be, um, compare. Yeah, pound, tonnage. Tonnage, and um, can you also find out, and now that we're, we're all commingled, but it does get separated at some point, uh, are, you, are we going to be able to find out the tonnage of plastics? I, I doubt that. I will, I will ask her that. One thing I do know is that the tipping fee, in other words, what the township pays per ton, is $23 for garbage, and it's $15 for recyclables. So the more that we recycle, the more money. It does save. That tipping fee is, is, is going up, actually, too. And it might, I think it might be going up this year. Up right. And if the commodities market ever came back... You know the recycling will that tipping fee will continue to go down. It will, assuming you know if, if the economy ever ever recovers. <laughs> but and you can guess that, I, or I would guess that trash tipping fees will always continue to go up. I mean, I can't see any reason why they would go down. But uh, that's not an educated statement. Okay. Okay. Any new business? All right, then I think we're all set, ready to adjourn? Okay, thank you everyone for coming.